Today Synology released two new NAS models which is DS1525 Plus and DS1825 Plus. So this is upgrading old uh, 22 series Firebase DS1522 Plus and DS1821 Plus. These two models were long overdue and finally we are going to see the upgrade. Let's have a look, is this actually an upgrade? I'll quickly go through things that are worse than before and a few things that are actually better compared to previous model. So first of all, let's have a look at the five bay, what is new and what is removed. So an older model, you would have five LAN ports. Now these four LAN ports are replaced by two 2.5 gig ports. So no more one gigabit ports. Some people might like it, some people might not. So if you have 2.5 gigabit switch, you can now take advantage of these two faster ports. No more need for link aggregating, port trunking, all these ports together to get faster speeds. But if that is not enough, you still get your 10 gigabit upgrade card. By upgrading this 10 gigabit card, now you have 10 plus 5 gigabit. So that's 15 gigabit bandwidth potentially. But since we are looking at negatives first, some people might not like the fact that they are having fewer LAN ports. Because with more ports available to you, you can build VLANs, you can connect them to several different networks physically to keep your data safe and isolated between two different networks or more. The other negative is USB ports, one at the back and one at the front. They are both slow 5 gigabit USB connections. So if you want fast backups, it's probably going to be faster to upgrade it with 10 gigabit card and do your backups that way. But if you want to offload your footage, if you're a video editor, through USB port, it's going to take a long time to do that. So many people hoped that there will be 10 gigabit USB port available for faster uh, transfer speeds, but it's not available to us through this new upgrade. Also regarding the NVMe slots, they haven't changed uh, either. They are still capped around 500 megabytes a second speed per slot. So even though the CPU inside is faster and there are potentially more lanes to have the faster bandwidth for internal components like NVMe's, we are not going to be seeing this on this new upgraded model. Also the NVMe's that you can use will be limited to their compatibility list and so far it's Synology only. Regarding hard drives that you can put in there, it's also bad news. You can only use uh, Synology approved drives, otherwise it's not going to work. And so far their compatibility lists show only Synology drives. Nobody's happy about that. And that also leads to a next negative, which is the maximum capacity you can have for this uh, NAS. The maximum drive you can put inside if you use Synology overpriced hard drives, it's 20 terabytes per drive. Before we could use bigger drives like 24 terabytes and above. But now when we look at their list, only Synology hard drives are allowed. And regarding M.2 slots, third party NVMEs are also not listed. And regarding CPU, it is a faster CPU inside. Instead of R1600 is now V1500B. The same CPU you probably seen on 8bay and a few other models but the CPU still does not have transcoding chip, which means if you want to stream your multimedia remotely, you'll need to use something called software transcoding, which uses CPU raw power to convert those videos. And it can take a long time and it can use a lot of CPU computing power, which means other services on the NAS will be massively affected. The CPU itself is also fairly old. It's four years old. It was released in 2021. But this is not something new. Synology very often use old CPUs in their NASes. Now we're going to look at a few good things about this NAS regarding CPU. Now it has two extra cores. Instead of two, it's going to have four and eight threads. This means you can run more virtual machines, twice as many. You can also set up more Docker environments and run those simultaneously. And also, as I mentioned, this CPU allows more of the bandwidth. So it supports 16 PCIe lanes with total of 15.8 gigabyte a second bandwidth. So this means how they can distribute these PCIe lanes on the motherboard. But it looks like they are not taking advantage of these extra PCIe lanes. NVMEs are still capped, USB is still slow. I'll also do some tests later so we can see actually how these PCIe lanes are distributed and where are the artificial bottlenecks set by Synology. 
otherwise overall performance comparing old CPU with new one uh, the old one achieved 3276 points whereas new one is 4829 points so that's 28% faster regarding transcoding this CPU is still not going to be good enough to smoothly transcode 4k videos but since this CPU is faster you will be able to transcode 1080p videos using software transcoding a little bit smoother and maybe even more transcoding streams at the same time so you can have more virtual machines more docker more transcoding streams if it's 1080p and the next improvement is 2.5 gig ports because now you can have 10 gigabit upgrade plus two 2.5 gig ports that gives you 15 gigabits uh, network speed if you combine them all together we'll obviously need 2.5 gig switch and 2.5 gig uh, either usb adapter or lan port on your computer as well there's one thing they have improved regarding software and they allow bigger volumes before it there was a limit of 108 terabytes now people can go up to 200 terabyte volume if they upgrade their ram to 32 gigabyte memory and the last thing that is good about this nas is that support cycle is refreshing itself which means it gets 10 years of support regarding firmware updates after 10 years this nas will go end of life and you will not get updates so you will need to buy a new nas but with this one up to 2035 you're safe to keep this nas the s1522 plus only had seven years remaining okay we can move on to ds1825 plus i have uh, six bay but eight bay is basically the same thing so let's move on to bad things again uh, they have removed four one gigabit LAN ports and replaced them by two 2.5 gig ports some people again might want to have more ports rather than faster ports so they can connect to different networks physically without need to play with VLANs with USB there are changes instead of four ports now we're gonna have only three ports and they are still slow five gigabit USB ports so if you want fast backups to your external drives there will be speed limit of five gigabit per second and this is not good news we wanted to see 10 gigabit or faster USBs regarding hard drives we are also limited to only Synology G drives at this point we will see if they add any third-party drives there is no hope for that but um, I hope they do this also means that maximum capacity per drive is limited to 20 terabytes which is not good before we could have 24 terabyte or bigger drives regarding CPU insight is exactly the same one as you saw in 21 plus model people will find it more like a downgrade than an upgrade the same old CPU as the previous model and the only new thing that they have added is 2.5 gig ports at the same time locking the hard drives since CPU is not changed there's also no transcoding as before if you want to do transcoding you will be limited to 1080p videos no 4k you can stream those videos locally but remote access will be a problem same applies to accessing cctv footage if you use it for surveillance seeing those 4k files remotely will be a problem so if i need to look at the positives and good things about this nas there's not really much that you can add to this so regarding this 8 bay upgrade from 21 series to 25 plus series is literally 2.5 gig port added there's nothing else but people could achieve similar speeds by link aggregating those four one gigabit ports or simply upgrading uh, through PCIe slot either with 10 gig or the 25 gig card so the only reason why someone would want to upgrade to 25 plus series is their refreshed uh, support cycle because 21 plus series model only had something like six years left before it goes end of life with this new model they will have 10 years of support cycle so that's firmware updates bug fixes and anything to do with security issues so this was a quick video showing what is good what is bad about these new upgrade models in my opinion upgrading a 5 bay model makes sense if you're not scared of uh, hdd locking but 1821 plus doesn't really have big changes at all but at least they didn't remove 10 gigabit upgrade slot for the 5 bay model as they did for the ds925 which is a 4 bay model but speaking of that i'll do some uh, videos if you want to how to add 10 gigabit ports through m.2 slot at the bottom of the nas 
So maybe we can bring back 10 gigabit connection to this 4-bay NAS. Regarding this 5-bay, if you want, I can make videos how to add the GPU cards through this M.2 slot. If you want to see that video, let me know. Later on, I'll do Top Gear NAS testing uh, on these NASs as well, so we can find out where are the bottlenecks. What are the speeds if you try to back it up through USB, through the LAN, how fast the transcoding is. Maybe I will also play with third-party incompatible drive upgrading, uh, and incompatible third-party NVMe upgrades, how to enable uh, pools, storage pools and third-party NVMEs and how to do 10 gigabit upgrades. So if you want to see those videos, follow the channel and you'll get notification when that video goes live. Otherwise, thank you for watching and see you next time.